I remember Alberto your uh, beautiful models that you did uh, the, for the in the Museum of Alicante the last time I saw you in Spain uh -huh. uh, they were really amazing they were small but very powerful uh, uh -huh. so in that sense uh, uh, the work speaks for itself uh, in, in in your work I mean it's, it's pretty amazing no, it was very uh, nice to see that and uh, it's very important for an architect to work with models 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 uh, models not to enjoy and to say ah i am a genius no no models like can mechanism to analyze to uh, to to know how uh, the sun is trespassing can uh, how the light is trespassing and thinking in front of the model, not only, oh, oh beautiful teachers, uh, that, but more, um, is, is very, is necessary, in my opinion, for me, at least, is necessary. Mm -hmm. What's amazing was the models were also kind of hand uh, size. They were also small, but beautiful. And yeah, very, no, this one, very precise. Am, with this one, I am exaggerating. This one is to <laughs> transmit this type of thing, but my models are, they are uh, at, at this moment for the mm, museum in New York. Uh, we are making a model one by 50. Eh? And it's, for example, this one. Mm, nice. And this one is capable to be traspassed by the sun and to. Uh, to study, to study, to continue. It's, I sometimes, uh, I like to use the, the verb to tune. Uh, maybe many of you are using some, or you can play some musical instrument. Before to, to play with your guitar or your violin or your piano, uh, the musical instrument, musical instrument must be very well tuned, tuned. And, I think with architecture, you must tune and tune and tune and tune. Uh, when I wrote this one that I, I am sending to you, uh, I sent to Maria uh, in a archive, huh? yes. in a PDF. Huh? And it's because when, in the same way, when you write a test and you are happy, you publish your test, but after the time is passing, when you reread or re, uh, you come back to your test because usually you come back uh, in a, uh, on the screen in Word, immediately you are changing some word, uh, tuning and introducing a new idea or cleaning. Uh, here I said that I was cleaning and Rewriting, you are eliminating the not important things in your test. In the same way, like in in the process before to build the building, the model with the model, you are tuning and tuning and tuning. And also, when are you constructing under construction? When when the the building is under construction, you go to to the work and you are mm, mm, tuning one more time you are you only cut when the building is finished mm. Jose Luis Borges the writer he said I am publishing my my books when I decide to finish because if I don't publish I continue correcting and correcting and correcting in the same way I think our labor, the most beautiful labor over the world, needs a lot of time. Uh, to my students, I say, what is the secret? To work, to work, to work, to work, to work. To be patient, to be calm, don't worry. Admit defects. This one don't, uh, is not to become a neurotic. <laughs> I remember some of my masters, he was a bit neurotic and he suffered a lot. Uh, our labor is not to suffer, it's to enjoy, enjoy from the beginning until the end and to, to make people happy.
to be you to become you happy and to people must be happy with your work and it permits defects defects are not that you didn't put attention you are putting attention and working and working tuning and tuning but at the end you are playing the guitar but it sounds uh, my no see what well, one of my master of your piano one of my master alejandro de la sota uh, every morning the first thing uh, when he awake uh, was playing a sonata by bach in his piano i think it's, it's a good idea hmm? music music is the salvation i am very happy with you and it's, it's funny because you are very serious. Everyone in your in your uh, screen very serious. <laughs> Thank you for coming. We have a, uh, some people joining in as we wait for our Dean Maria Perverini, who's going to do the introduction. Okay. Uh, to to the event. But thank you, Alberto. Beautiful words, and it's always great to hear you speak about your work. But as you say. The work speaks by itself, right? So. Thank you. After I would like to receive impertinent uh, questions, <laughs> no, no adulation, no, but uh, putting your uh, your finger in my eye. Be careful no, what you ask no, for. No, but but <laughs> but interesting questions you no know, okay i like okay you like but interesting questions hmm? maria where is maria maria is uh, about coming. to join us yes it's yeah. coming maybe traffic traffic <laughs> <laughs> no when i receive uh serious speaking seriously when i received the last days news from new york i am very worried because they say that is uh, is uh, very strong. The, the pandemic is especially cruel in New York. That is true? It is. Uh, I mean, it has, ha it has hit the city very hard, uh, especially businesses, as we all know. Mm -hmm. And um, the, I mean, when you, when, you go to, when you go to the streets, it's not the same city. At the same time, some, what's kind of beautiful is that all the restaurants have the tables outside. Uh, so we have been asking for that type of things to happen for many years. And now the city finally is like engaging more with the public space, I would argue. Mm -hmm. But uh, is there, there are a lot of uh, challenges, uh, uh -huh. right? Special office buildings, right? A lot of challenges. A lot of buildings are empty. Yeah. yeah. It's a very strange. It's almost like being a post-disaster kind of a condition, yeah. situation in certain places. Yeah. For me, it's a pity. I would like to be in New York. To, my, my idea uh, was to be living during this period of time in New York a bit. I, I, every year I used to go to, to spend a month or a couple of months uh, here uh, in New York. And it's a pity to, to have this impossibility. But I hope, uh, I hope this problem will be resolved soon, soon, I hope. Giovanni, Maria is joining us, right? Maybe in between, you can make, make questions and I can, I can answer. Exactly, right? I think it will be interesting if our, our students have some question or some uh -huh. idea. Even following the, what you said about music, about time about working and reworking on the design ideas thank you it's john this is giovanni 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 yes with with you are we are quite making this question yeah i think it's is uh, on the one hand our labor needs a, 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 an intensity uh, an intense dedication but on the other hand you cannot create a good a good architecture if you don't uh, love music and literature, poetry, poetry. I have more, many times I wrote that I have in my libraries uh, more books on, on poetry than in architecture. 
it's very good to 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 know about architecture but is uh, uh, for example uh, i finished two days ago a biography on magallanes uh, by stefan zweig stefan zweig you know this very good writer uh, tedesco and uh, he wrote he writes like a genius, very interesting. And this biography demonstrates that uh, um, was Magallanes who made the, uh, the turn to the world and Noel Cano. In, in, our, story, in our stories is Juan Sebastián Elcano. No, no, it was Magallanes. And the, oh, everything to, to read, to write, to enjoy with music, with theater, poetry, uh, everything. And that's I think what, it's a creator. Right. That's what I always, we always share with our students, that we are lucky because everything is architecture around us. Everything can inspire us, can teach us something, can create a new line to investigate, a new thinking process. And that's, that's a great kind of um, fortunate, but it's also a, uh, an element that make our life a little bit more complicated because we have a lot to think about and constantly. But I do admire your reference to the, it's a, it's a, ta it's a process that needs time and patience, right? Rilke in his Elogio alla Durata was saying that time is a quiet, is a value. And there is the kind of instantaneous inspiration, the kind of the genius intuition, but then we have to work on it and keep working and reworking. So I agree with your idea of be educated to patient, to be patient, to uh, be open to discoveries instead and be focused on closing, on finishing sometime. Even though we have deadlines that we have to deal with, especially our students when there's finals and stuff. So we have to arrive to a point when you have, you have to be able to say what is the, the stage of the work and what you, you, you have done. I just maybe I want to say a few words about Alberto Campo Baeza because uh, first of all, it's an honor to have you here at the School of Architecture and Design at the New York Institute of Technology. For the younger generations, I have to say that uh, the work of Alberto has been very inspiring at many levels, at the professional level, but also at the university level. It was always very pedagogical. Uh, I'm, I'm from Argentina originally, so I studied there. And uh, Alberto's uh, work was uh, highly influential uh, from very early on um, and actually was consider, is, is considered one of the masters of architecture of the Latin American or Latin speaking, uh, Spanish speaking countries, uh, especially, right? Alberto is a, a prominent figure in Spain and um, it can be associated, his architecture can be associated with in the United States with the five architects, if you want, a continuation of the five architects, uh, Peter Eisman, Richard Meyer, uh, in other words, the second generation of after Le Corbusier, which uh, consider uh, archi white architecture in relationship to the sun, abstract architecture. But uh, in the case of Alberto Campoes, I have to say extremely well built, perhaps uh, a feature that in the US is uh, st slightly different, a different type of uh, way of doing architecture. So I just uh, wanted to say those few words because um, at least in Latin America, the work of Alberto has always been a reference there. And I see, for instance, in our lecture now, we have people from uh, Argentina joining us. We have people that used to work for you in your office here in New York and in Spain. So I'm happy to see the names. I recognize some of the names uh, there uh, that, um, the, uh, that okay. demonstrate the continuity of that influence. But I wanted to ask you, Alberto, as a mode of introduction. At uh, one, what... second, one second, when you... Yes. you quoted uh, five architects, evidently I, I admired, admired and I admire uh, Peter Eisman, Richard Meyer, and this group. But uh, yeah. sometimes uh, I, many of my houses are white. White, not only because Le Corbusier or five architects and so on, but because my, many of my houses were built in south, the south of Andalusia, and is uh, uh, the the architecture there is wide, wide, wide. This is the reason. But for example, it was funny when I made one of 
uh, today I will present the house of the infinite. It's in the south south of Spain, in front of Africa, in Tarifa, where Gibraltar is. And the owner, uh, he is the, the most rich uh, man in Belgium, and she is an architect. And when she commissioned me the house, she was thinking in a white house by Campo Baeza in Andalusia. But I decided there, and after I will explain, I decided not to make a white house, to make a podium in Travertino Onichiato, a, a stone capable to be in the same way like the sun on the beach. And is any piece in white in this, in this house. This stone, Roman stone, because also because the Roman people were living in this area of South uh, Spain. And this type of things, I thank you. Okay. Uh, you, I was just uh, making, I, 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 I like a lot that uh, reference. Um, and especially also your Guerrero house is one of the, our students in second year that are analyzing your Guerrero house. Uh, so I see some names here uh, of our students, uh, which is also that is a, a white house in the middle of the countryside, which is uh, quite powerful and beautiful. Uh, but I was making the reference to the five architects because of the context of where we are in New York. And, uh, uh, and I also know that you're friends of Peter Eisenman and you know Richard Meyer very well and so on. So it was always I nice for me. I continue to... my friend relation with them. I know that Richard is passing a, a difficult time but I continue being his friend. I am proud of him and he has he have defects. I have also many defects. He, life is like this. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Maria is experiencing some uh, technical difficulties, but she is joining us shortly. Okay. okay. Some uh, difficulties with the Zoom, but uh, she will join shortly. Thank give, you. give me a, a, a question, Giovanni. Oh, yes, I can have plenty of them. So, um, for example, do you know how old am I? I am 73 years old. Oh, I can't believe it. And I'm very healthy. And what in uh, um, fighting with the pandemic and with a problem? Thanks, God. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. Being healthy in the spirit, in, in mind, and soul is the base to react to this pandemic and to all uh, issues, right? So, but in the meantime, I would like to, just to, while we are waiting for Maria, I'll, I'll, to know this, how, how much of your biography is in your project? How much of your um, kind of reveries are in your project? Yeah, maybe the first point is my grandfather was an architect. He was uh, an architect in Valladolid, the city where uh, I was born, and my mother, his daughter, uh, injected me the poison of architecture. Mm -hmm. And from the beginning, when I was uh, a child, I had, I never, I had never had doubts about my future like an architect. After, uh, I was so fortunate that I, I, the first year at the school, I had like professor Alejandro de la Sota. Alejandro de la Sota was uh, one of the Spanish masters, but maybe, not maybe sure, the most uh, radical, sober, uh, last year Italian uh, commissioned me a book on Alejandro de la Sota, I entitled this book like Laconic Sota. This laconic architecture, very, very extreme, uh, no minimal. Sometimes people, they say, some people ignorant, they say, oh, Campo Baita is a minimal. It's like John Pozon, like, uh, it's a minimal. Or oh, Arbo Park, I love Arbo Park, but, eh? uh, or oh, Marrozco. Eh? In, painting, music, and so on. Uh, and no, I, I am trying to respond uh, uh, to every commission 
in the most no with pre 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 thoughts no no i try to respond in the most adequate uh, way mm. yeah you said biography alejandro de la sota after i was professor with side lisa and and after professor with uh, uh, javier carvajal uh, Oh, Alberto, we, we have Maria with us. We have Maria, yes. Okay. We have okay. a, student, a student question, but we can leave the student question yeah. for later on. I think we, we, have Maria. we already answered to that question as well. Yes, about exactly. what okay. is okay. you, so. But Maria is going to give us the introduction to Alberto Campoboy. So welcome, Maria. Uh, my, dear, my dear Alberto, I have to apologize with you. We are having some technical issues in the school year in Long Island. I am from. I understand. I understand. Sometimes technology is not our friend. <laughs> okay. okay. But I apologize for the delay, but uh, let me tell you how happy and honored and delighted I am to see you and to have you with us today. Thank and you. Good Thank afternoon you. to everybody. Uh, I would like to extend. A real, true, warm welcome to everyone. I am Maria Perbellini, the Dean of the School of Architecture and Design, and I am delighted on behalf of the New York Tech and on behalf of our school to welcome a distinguished and renewed guest today, Alberto Campo Baeza. It is a great pleasure and a true honor for me to introduce an incredibly poetic architect and inspiring professor uh, with his omit needless words presentation. Alberto, and, and please, we are late, but let me give you an introduction of all the incredible profile uh, accomplishments, awards that Alberto received in his career. Uh, Alberto was born in Valladolid in Spain. He has been a tenure professor in the School of Architecture of Madrid, the ATSAM, for more than 50 years. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> he has taught at They Indiana. support me. <laughs> well, maybe there is a reason why, right? Uh, maybe, you know, he's it's, it's, it's saying a lot about you. He has taught a number of prestigious a, a, a number of prestigious universities in Europe and the United States. Uh, I just mentioned a few of them: ATH in Zurich, the Ecole Polytechnique Federale de Lausanne in Switzerland, as well as UPenn, the Kansas State University, the CUA University in Washington, the University of Buffalo, the Technische Universität in Vienna and other schools, the list is really long. And since uh, 2017 until 2020, he has been Professor Emeritus at the ATSAM in Madrid. Uh, Alberto is the recipient of many international awards and significant recognitions like the Eduardo Torroja Medal, the award of the Universidad Politecnique de Madrid for his excellence in teaching the Henry Tessenow Gold Medal, the Arnold Brunner Memorial Prize of the American Academy of Arts and Letters in New York, the International Award Architecture in Stone in Verona, my hometown, uh, the Piranesi Prix in Rome, the Gold Medal for the Spanish Association of Architecture Institutes in 2020, and many, many more. The list is really, really long. Additional outstanding recognitions, I just want to mention the Royal Academy of Fine Arts of San Fernando of Spain and the Royal Institute of British Architects, RIBA International Fellowship, and the Honorary Fellow of the American Institute of Architects since 2019, and the Doctor Honoris Causa from at least two universities uh, in Europe. Alberto has given lectures all over the world. His work has been extensively exhibited in the United States, in Europe, in Asia, and is the author of books and publications in multiple editions, more than 30 editions, translated in several languages. And his work is also collected in a monograph book, 
Campo Baeza, Complete Works by Thames and Hudson. And I stop here because I could go on and on and on, but please now join me in welcoming Alberto Campo Baeza. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. Sí. Eh, okay. Just a moment. This one. Yo me veo allí. Y las y los y mis imágenes van siendo estas, ¿no? Esta. Sí, perfecto. Esto es lo que estamos metiendo. Okay. Okay. Thank you very, very much. I have no words enough to thank this opportunity, this invitation. It's for me an honor to to be at the NYIT. Maria, thank you. Uh, you are very, very nice and too generous with me. This, uh, you know, and uh, you quote a bit uh, that uh, <clears throat> I was teaching and enjoying because the generous people in your country, in, in the States, and this was his animate with Richard Wesley when I was teaching uh, at the University of Pennsylvania or when I had my first exhibition in, in the States, in the arms of Miss van der Rohe in, the, in Chicago, in the Crown Hall, or some different uh, exhibitions and labels, uh, the States and the American Academy of of arts and letters, da, 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 with my good friend just now, Cody Upton, and including your president. Uh, when your president Obama came to Madrid, uh, it was a honor for me, uh, invited to a lunch with him in a very, very interesting conversation. Our friend Peter Eisman uh, on the right is, uh, nice Meryl Streep that you know, or my friend uh, Richard Meyer, or Kelly Franton that is a very, very close friend and is a master in many ways. Uh, when I was at Columbia University, I came back, Stephen Hall, Richard Meyer, uh, Kevin Roach and uh, Paul Sek, and one more time, Kelly Frampton with Massimo Vignelli uh, and so on. My first house in the States, in Garrison, the only Spanish house, the only Spanu house, uh, the project for Tom Ford that never was built. And just now, I am, uh, I hope, uh, but uh, they promise that the construction is coming very, very soon, uh, uh, a museum very close to the house for the same clients. Okay, uh, before to, to, to show my works, I always like to speak a bit some about my spirit. All of you, when you were children, all of you uh, read this little book, The Element of a Style by William Strong and E.B. White. And he, they resume summarize they say their ideas in the title of my lecture, Omit Needless Words. I insist that it's not minimalism, it's not to, to be boring, no, no, it's to be precise. It's like poetry. In poetry, poetry is not a minimalism in literature. With my architecture, I try to be in some way a poet using only the, the, the words that I need, no more. And to support my table, I use three legs. Eliot, uh, Ortega, Eliot, you know, is an American poet after living in London, but Ortega is a Spanish philosopher and Sota, my master. Uh, Eliot is proclaiming in this beautiful, uh, a test and on the right the other he says he says that um, uh, it is necessary to renounce to surrender a bit to renounce a bit to try to be more universal to renounce to be too personal you know the most famous 
the Spanish architect Gaudí is so personal that it's impossible to continue and to be inspired. It's, it's a genius, but alone. I tried to be more universal. Or Ortega is also using the same words than uh, Eliot, and he speaks also about the if some writer or philosopher is using too much words, too much uh, things incapable to control, uh, they are a bit provincial. Uh, Eliot used the word provincial, and uh, Ortega is using a Spanish word provinciano. Provinciano, si dice in Italiano, is very clear to describe that you must renounce and to try to be more universal. Universality that I learned from my master Sota that I spoke before. My projects, and you can say, oh my God, and the first project is without, without, without windows, without holes. This is very, very radical. Okay, I am very radical, but this uh, the back. Oh my God! And the, the face. Eh? This house is contained in a in a cube, and I try to make uh, a, 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 a the space. Uh, on the one hand, using an helicoidal system of uh, connected double height spaces like a. Uh, cork scroll, scroll uh, this one, many models, and this continuity is not, in this case, is not the traditional continuity uh, from the modern movement, but here is a bit this one that the German architect, they said the, the round plum, 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 uh, and uh, <clears throat> the model in the hand, and this one is a model uh, very clear, transmitting. The plan is a square divided in four and with a bag with the elements servant and communication. And the house is looking at the landscape. What is the landscape? The landscape is this one, is Madrid. Madrid is in front of us and the holes in the terraces, carpet in the terraces or uh, in, in, in the rooms, the windows and holes are looking and framing, framing and putting in value the landscape. Every of my architectures uh, is reading the place. This, when I was a student, uh, the, the professor, they said, the locus is very important, the locus, to understand, okay, they, are, they were right. And I tried to, to read the locus. The interior spaces connected, double height, double height, and double height in this, uh, and terraces uh, with openings and um, different, in, a, in this box open to the sky. The entry to frame and to be, uh, I know that the owner, the client is using a lot this table to be reading in front of this beautiful landscape. In the same way, but in also a house, but a house forever, eh, is a tomba, a tomb in Venice. I use uh, this uh, cube, a cube in an isotropic way. You remember the drawings by this uh, German uh, painter, Escher, and he made this cube capable to be read in every direction. In every, di in every corner, I open a uh, an opening and to have the light entering and in 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 concrete uh, is six by six by six no more in the center are the uh, the cadaver in this uh, uh, white cube with um, uh, Italian white the best Italian white uh, marble mm -hmm. It's so simple, it's an idea. I try to defend that to have, to, to build a good building, you need to have an idea, not only to develop needings, to respond to questions, more than that, it's a, it's, 
is, is an idea, the idea of this cube with a floating cube on the air with the rest of the people. The third project is a building in front of a cathedral for, for offices. Offices is too delicate to be offices. I remember, you remember the first uh, uh, picture with uh, Kevin Roach and um, Polsek, the, the Polish um, the Polish architect living and working in New York. And they said to me, how did you make for not having metallic connections? Because the, the building is only two plants, has a camera around. This camera is protecting and putting the weather in the, in the right way and no more. And because it's only two, two levels, it doesn't need more than a special silicon to connect the the the, the 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 walls, and fortunately it's so long, and this year no last year I was in New York visiting my building and was intact in perfect. Uh, and it's not so so easy. The first the first box responding to the place and uh, this one is uh, by uh, Paul Sick for for Apple and this one is by uh, Foster. Uh, re, um, Norman Foster also for Apple and uh, I made so long another building not in the same way but also with glass without nothing uh, contained it in a box in, 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 in a stone open to the sky. Here there is a no more in the box open to the sky, this is the, the croquis. The croquis is uh, the, first, the first box in a stone. Respond is an answer to the city and the second, in the second, I can be more free. In the corner, this uh, bigger and powerful and wider stone, the corner stone, this corner that you remember in the Holy Scriptures, is quoted, uh, the, the corner stone is this one. Uh, this model is uh, explaining very well how the, the shape of the, of the wall in a stone is uh, uh, actually uh, connected with the, the shape of, of, the, of the city in front of the cathedral. Um, the wall is using the same uh, wall, the same stone than the cathedral, and the interior. I am creating a very modern uh, box of glass with this camera capable to control the the temperature always. Here is very clever how uh, the shape of the of the stone is uh, free, and the the shape of my glass box is very well controlled. Uh, I insist that an architect mustn't be only worried to the first idea, but at the end, until the end, he must control every detail, every section, every millimeter. Not neurotically, but enjoying. It's so enjoyable to have the first idea than to resolve the, the last detail. The wall in the stone is wonderful with the natural, the interior, this contrast, the box in the stone is open to the sky and the interior, some details, uh, but is uh, the, the glass is possible when I consult with the expert, they said, yes, Alberto, it's possible because it has only two levels. With two levels, you can put complete pieces until the floor supported uh, on the floor and after to create this triedrus, triedrus in glass. And this camera capable to control in, in Zamora. Zamora is uh, in the center of the Spain, very, 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 very cold in the winter. And this one and details and 
uh, I demonstrate, I am here demonstrating that we can uh, in, be into the, the corridor uh, in glass. Um, in the corridor in glass, you can see on the floor some, some uh, holes capable to, to produce the, the air. The corner stone, of course, uh, I consult the, the priest in the cathedral about the Latin, the Latin inscription. And after my friend uh, Vicens is uh, another uh, professor in Madrid, very close to me and very cultivated. And he corrected a priest. And also in the same way that is Pietra Lapis Angularis is Vitrum Angularis. And we could speak a lot, a lot, but is uh, I enjoy a lot with this building and with this solution so clear and so controlled. After two years ago, they commissioned me uh, um, poly poly sportive uh, a room a box for sports. My first idea was to make a box in translucent was a box for sports and a box for uh, classrooms. And I decided, okay, I made the, the box for sports with the four walls in translucent glass to take a lot of light. After studying, because this box was oriented in the diagonal north-south, two walls to the north, two walls to the south, I closed, I put, blind walls to the south and translucent glass to the north after I open and many more operations. And the light is, I must recognize that the light is beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And the beams were composed beams to, to cover this uh, distance, long distance, and no more. And it's so, so clear project. Here, always models. I insist that I, we make models in my office not to enjoy and to say, ah, how nice our work, hmm? but to analyze, to analyze and to, to continue tuning and tuning and tuning the space. Um, and also models one by one about details, also to, to study. Hmm? Plants are very simple under the the steps uh, are the, the servant rooms with the uh, uh, elements, uh, the water and so on. And it's very simple and very easy to understand. And in the caves is a swimming pool and so on. The beams, the beams in direct when you are, it's, it's so enjoyable to be an architect. When you are touching your beams, it's very moving, not, not only to, to project, not only to have the idea, not only to, to be the beams on the place, but also when you have the beams capable to be touched by you. Here was when we decide, it uh, was a, a, cute, a weird moment. At this moment we decide, instead of to paint the beams on the top, to paint the beams before to put on the top. Hmm? So simple, you must continue working uh, during the work. And when I decide to eliminate the, the column in the corner, to have a transparent corner, uh, I need to reinforce the, the structural corner and it's so beautiful. Uh, every part of the architecture uh, is uh, enjoyable. Here, the structural solution and the result. Mm -hmm. The result to, to get in the same way that in Zamora, uh, a com completely transparent and delicate corner. My workers, <laughs> when we were making the steps with ceramic tiles, three meters by one meter, enormous pieces, and my workers, they made perfectly. They were um, South American workers. And I was so proud of them that I said, a picture with you. And they were so proud being with me. And no more.
the, the grades, the, the, the steps, uh, perfect in this white, white. Also the, the floor is a classical floor in maple, but this maple uh, with a tent in white and the light is what a very, very luminous uh, pavilion for sports. And it is working not only for sports and everything that uh, has is for a university outside Madrid and they are enjoying and using a lot this space. They are calling me and writing me many things many times. From the exterior, uh, the pavilion for vamos bien de tiempo, ¿no? Classrooms uh, uh, on, the, on the ground floor is open because on the left it will be a, a square in continuity with the plan of the ground floor. Details and details. Cornell, how important in the same way that in the other project we, we I spoke about the corner stone in the stone and always the corner, a facade is important. When two facades are joining, this encounter is always in, in the story of the architecture is very important. The sports pavilion. And almost finishing, this is the house of the infinite. I repeat, I comment that how the owner was, is an architect, she is very happy. And she commissioned me uh, thinking that I was making one more time a white house. But instead of being in, in, the, in Andalusia, but in the interior, this one was on the border, on the border border, because uh, it was against the dune. Because before it was another house in Rouen, and my project could, because I was substituting the, the house before, I could use the same rules, the same norms. It is because it was fantastic. I could make a, a flat horizontal plan like the deck of a ship in front of the of the sea, I insist, like a ship. Uh, I, uh, one more time, I repeat, uh, you must, architects, we must read the place, the locus. And here, the result of this reading is this one, a, a plan, a flat horizontal plane in travertine, travertine, but not pure travertine, but Onichiato, travertin onichiato because the color and uh, the steams were very close to the sand. Now why uh, speaking about the horizontal plan, the flat horizontal plan? This one is an engraver by Rembrandt and everything is very Rembrandt, but when he's representing the plan where Christ is presented uh, in this Esse Homo is the plan is uh, at the height like the eyes. This one, Miss van der Rohe knew very well this trick and the plane is converted, is transformed in only a line, very light, in such a way that Picasso, when inspired in Rembrandt, use the same as, as Seomo, everything is very Picasso, less the line of the plane is one more time made with rule. In this way, I made so long this house. This house is a basement, the basement and the top, the cave and the heart. This one that our master, uh, Kenneth Franton, spoke about stereotomic and tectonic. Kenneth Franton is, uh, is very honest and he confessed that was <clears throat> and learned from uh, Gottfried Semper. And here is very clever, the same idea. The lightness on the top, the heaviness on the basement, the, the, the podium, and you carve the podium. Here the house in garrison is the same idea 
a bit more sophisticated, but the same. And this between cathedrals is the same. When they commissioned me to cover a ruin, an antique, uh, instead of make a cover, I made a, a, a flat horizontal plane, in this case in, in marble, in white marble from this area, and no more. It's so simple and it works. It works perfectly. And this is my last word under construction at this moment, and I will, I hope to, to explain in my next lecture in NYIT. The house of the infinite is this one. This plane is carved to, to enter, the house is under, to have the swimming pool, and to have something like an amphitheater, and to be protected from the wind. The wind here is very, very strong. Uh, sketches, explaining, and Michael Heiser that you know from the DIA Foundation is carving the carving the the floor to get this type of effects. Uh, the assistant of the photographer he gave me this this gift eh, made in 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 the beach in front of our house, the the house made in in the stone. I think it's very very clever. And my my first uh, models in with sheet of paper and the model. The idea is to <clears throat> to disappear, to be <clears throat> against the against the earth. And uh, it's a conventional uh, room, Samsung. And what is Mr. Campo Baeza like a clown here? Hmm? Uh, is deciding one more time when I was at the beginning of the under construction, deciding what was exactly the line for the height, how high was the plan, the plane. And you must be precise until the last moment. Or in this case, under construction, how the pieces on the corner are uh, wider than the other pieces in such a way that it looks like strong. And I hope one day this house will be corroded by the wind with the sun and will be like a ruin. My, my friend David Hogney enjoy with this uh, picture. The, the owners are, the clients are very happy. The garden has not grass, but sand. Interiors, travertine, travertine, and the infinite on the horizon is infinite. This house is reading very well this horizon. And to finish my last project that fortunately I hope to build in Mexico, my more than collaborator, but my collaborator, Rene Lopez, was my client, is my client. He received the commission to make uh, uh, houses on this, on the two beaches, and in the center was the rock entering in the water. And he said to me, Alberto, go to make something that you must think about. And immediately is reading a bit like the House of the Infinite in front of the sea. One more time, a flat. Flat horizontal plane. To, to construct, I need to construct a, a, a podium or using Greek words, a temenos. The temenos was this plan, this plane where the gods were coming to speak with, with human beings. And this, this box, this podium, in the interior uh, will have an impressive interior and but the most important like in the house of the infinite is the top is this plane carpet with the same uh, mechanisms that i use it in the uh, uh, between cathedrals carving carving and because the material here is concrete using 
uh, the same rock, the, the same rock where is put the, the, the building in such a way that it looks like that the building is emerging from the rock. Mm -hmm. And drawings, structure, the structure is very simple. One, white, six, one, six, one, six. It's like this one. And the opening, this opening in front of, uh, will frame the, the horizon. And, and no more, I hope I, all of my illusion at this moment is in this project and everything is collaborating uh, in this one. But until to finish, until your nice, but a bit provocative uh, questions, I would like to repeat my first words at the beginning. Our labor, overall for students, our labor to be an architect is the most beautiful labor all over the world. God, God is the great architect. And we are translating ideas, materializing dreams. We dream, not stupidities, but being very rational, using the reason like the first instrument. In the same way that I defend that uh, light is the light and gravity Light is the main and, and, and the most important material for an architect, and is free, light. Also, um, reason is the main instrument used by an architect. Our architecture must be not capricious, but deep, not boring, deep, profound, uh, beautiful. We are, our attempt is to take to travel the beauty. This is our attempt. And it is because we will become happy and people living in our architecture will become also happy. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alberto, for this amazing presentation. I just had to say, I love your work. It's Thank really, you. really, Thank you. Outstanding. And uh, I would like to start uh, with a conversation with you. Uh, I will be short and then eventually we can open up to the audience if uh, you know, they have additional questions uh, and establish with you a conversation about your work. I am definitely fascinated by a certain form of serene precision that your work demands, is almost demanding that. It's not happening accidentally or casually. It's a demand. It looks like it's something necessary. And your lecture revealed how architecture can be and is actually more essential while being uh, profound in the meaning of it. And at the point that it attains greater universality in order to be personal. So in poetry, you mentioned poetry, words move our heart. And your last book, Rewriting, is about architecture and is about trying to rewrite your text and is about eliminating the superfluous parts to speak about the key questions. Beauty, time, space, light. And I would add, because we saw it today, materiality, embedding all those questions. And all this, what we saw today was moving our hearts. So I consider that poetry. But I would like to ask you if you could expand a little bit on your relationship between your built work and your built ideas and your writing. Yes, thank you for your question. Uh, I sent to Maria the archive with the complete book. Tomorrow, uh, the, printed, the printed book arrived today, this morning and I will send tomorrow some issues. But because I sent to you the original uh, 
uh, archive, uh, you could hang uh, this archive for all of our friends and they can read immediately the, the, the subjects. Sí, para que el trabajo sí. construido, and, las ideas okay. y las And you are asking, uh, um, your question is responded uh, by me many times when I say, I push the best uh, um, of my students to continue teaching, to teach, to build, to think, to write. Uh, an architect is a thinker. He's not only a composer of forms, like a composer, no, no. He's something, is between philosopher and sculpture, and an architect is very complete. Uh, in my school uh, in Madrid, we try to, um, Kenne Franton defended our school, it's very complete, a bit longer, a lot of years, very intense, because I think if someone is teaching, when you are teaching, and you know many of you that you are on this, in my, on my screen, I see very nice uh, girls and very serious <laughs> men. Uh, and I think more of you, uh, you are teaching. And you know that when you are teaching, you are learning more than teaching. Uh, when you are building, you are um, also learning more than all. It is because I think it's a bit heavy to, uh, it's not so easy to, I, but I would like to insist in this idea of an architect must be intense, must be dedicated, must be, must dedicate a lot of time to the first ideas, the first sketches, the pre-project, the project, the executive and under construction and so on, but non-neurotic, intense, enjoying. Uh, and no more. But uh, when I spoke at the beginning, three legs using Eliot, um, Ortega, a, a poet, a philosopher, and an architect, was trying to make like you are, like, like in your question, it's um, impossible. I think when uh, someone, someone can only to teach, but is. Uh, uh, I, I think sometimes, I don't know if some of you, you are only teaching because it's not so easy. Sometimes it's not so easy to have clients. I have very few clients and um, I prefer to be on this way, only few works because uh, someone can say, okay, Alberto, how quantity of works? If you analyze, my buildings are few. A lot of projects, a lot of, but few built projects uh, with, for 73. Hmm? Maybe for a young architect is too much. But I was so fortunate, I was in my life, I was, I must know more than to, to thank God for many things. Also for that, to, to select, to decide, to have no the temptation of money. An architect, a, a good architect can uh, win a lot of money, a lot earn a lot of money, making many big buildings, but not taking care of them. I prefer only the world that you can control, but because you need and you uh, are right when you proclaim to write to think, to read, to study, to teach, to build. It's the same, it's the same. I think it's impossible, I cannot separate. Thank you very much, Maria. Thank you, Alberto. Uh, and since you mentioned the three legs of your table, if you allow me this metaphoric uh, reference, uh, as your influences, as your mentors, right? We have Eliot, a poet, we have Ortega y Gasset, a Spanish philosopher, we have Alejandro de la Sota, a Spanish architect. I would add also that I see a lot of Louis Barragan, the Mexican. Of course, of course. How uh, no? 
I write, and many other influences. So because we have students here attending your lectures, I would like you to explain to them the importance of mentorship the importance of referring to the work of somebody else and when is the moment for you to actually free yourself from your masters yeah thank you this i was so fortunate i i repeat that my first professor was alejandro de la sota and uh, i remember he was very radical and very ta 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 and the first project was a building in 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 a bay yeah, in the water and uh, and every student made some piece uh, in cantilever over the hill, looking at the bay. And because I understood perfectly my master, I made a box in glass with wheels into the water, huh? running. And my my friends, Alberto is. It's impossible. It's not. In the Finally, Alejandro de la Sota gave to me the best grade. Ah, I was very funny. Uh, mentorship. And you said Barragan. That is curious because my last uh, uh, lecture on a streaming like this one was some days ago in Spain, in Spanish. And was the same, the same question with Barragan. Uh, is Barragan also do reference? Of, of, of course, Barragan was a genius. I tried sometimes, trying uh, being inspired in Barragan uh, to uh, to make uh, pruebas, uh, yes, uh, uh, put tests with color, and finally, I I refused because I was an, a disaster. Mm -hmm. But in my only mm, house in Mexico, in Monterrey, in honor to that I, I didn't present today because uh, I, 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 I decide to be, to be short, not to be uh, uh, long and, and heavy. And, but the house in New York, in uh, Monterrey, has a, a wall in gold, golden, receiving the light and transforming the interior air in the space in this house is golden. And Barragan was a genius. I invited, it's an anecdote, short but very beautiful, when I invited uh, Peter Eisman, Richard Meyer, uh, every New York architect to come in the, in the 90s to my class, to my school, they came and to crown this action, I invited Louis Barragan. And Barragan uh, wrote to me a letter, Dear Alberto, I would like to go uh, to Madrid, but I am preparing myself to well die. And wow, well, he, he never came because he died in some months after. I love and I adore Barragan. Was a great architect, great architect. More questions. Uh, impertinent, impertinent questions. <laughs> I would like to, uh, I have a chat here full of questions, so I'm going to read some of them to you, okay? Thank you. Thank you. We want to be nice with you today. <laughs> Me too. So one of them says, how do you choose which are the needed words for your creations? How do you choose your words? No, when I, I say I, I choose, but I don't choose too much because I don't receive many, 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 many clients and many commissions. Fortunately, I receive some commissions and uh, uh, maybe I go to speak about something like uh, uh, could be a bit inconvenient. The last uh, client, uh, escape, escape, escape because I was, I was working a lot, making a lot of sketches and my collaborator said to me, Alberto, one more time, you must not uh, have the mistake that 
to be uh, working and working and working and after the client take you, your sketches disappear without paying nothing and it is because we have uh, so uh, poor. <laughs> and the last client I asked some uh, f uh, a bit of money to continue working and he respond a letter of oh, very, very proud and very impertinent. And I said, oh, no more. And maybe it is because I said no more. And, but um, I never refuse. Uh, I think they know and they smell and they disappear. Hmm? If they see that my project is not in in his uh, head, but fortunately, I think 90 or 99% of my clients become happy and become enjoying a lot with my words. Uh, some months ago, I, I listened that one, two of my clients in Spain, in Madrid, they were uh, selling put, put, put uh, their houses uh, in venta, for sale. For sale. Huh? And I said, why? And I discovered that if you put your house for sale, uh, it's possible to, in front of taxes, to reduce, to reduce your taxes. Because both of them, when I asked, they said, no, no, Alberto, don't worry. And we are happy, happy, happy with the houses. Mm? My clients, fortunately, are happy. Mm? I try. You know? Thank you, Alberto. One more question. Uh, could you please explain the relationship between your buildings and the landscapes where they live? Who is more important, the building, the landscape, both? It's clear, the answer is clear, both, both. It's not, uh, when I said the house of the infinite is disappearing, it's disappearing, but the architecture is there. Uh, when you are creating an architecture, you are imposing, uh, building some piece in the landscape, I think it's, uh, necessary to understand the landscape. If I am proposing a flat horizontal plan in the house of the infinite without piece on the top, like in the blast house, is because uh, the beach on the south, south of Spain, not only permits to be living on this open plan, but uh, also the client, uh, but it's impossible, for example, to make this house in Madrid, because in Madrid, if you have this idea, it's stupid, but in Madrid, on the top of this open space, you will be uh, frozen immediately, frozen in the winter, and uh, toast uh, in the summer. In Andalusia, uh, it's very common to use terraces. So when I was when I was a child, I was living not in Valladolid but in Cadiz. Cadiz is this south of Spain, where the House of the Infinite, the Guerrero, the Gaspar House, and so on are. Uh, the the terraces are especially uh, used spaces, beautiful spaces, in more in the House of the Infinite on the border of the sea. Yes, I am only reading, but uh, to your question is a balance between landscape and, and, and building. Mm -hmm. so, so simple, it's not so difficult to read. Thank you. I keep reading the chat questions. What is your view of the effect of your buildings on the human condition? And please interpret this in any way you want. Human condition. Uh, when I say they are happy, people living in my houses or using my buildings, is not because they say, ah, oh, I am building 
in a piece made by a, an architect uh, with recognition. No, 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 no. Uh, my, my buildings are not untouchable. Huh? Uh, I am not making uh, pieces of art, untouchable. I am living here. I, I cannot put a, a canvas or uh, it's very funny. My conversation with one of my uh, clients with another house under construction is uh, with this a bit these feelings and I said no 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 you are free if, if you like books a lot of libraries with a lot of books if you have a lot of uh, of uh, canvas paintings okay of course uh, I am very happy when, when when I enter in the house in New York in Garrison and my client has the first painting is by Bar Rothko, a little Rothko in green and, and ye, uh, green and blue that is not so use, some useful and is and I enjoy but he enjoy with this canvas in my house. I insist architects we mustn't produce an architecture neurotic untouchable uh, no 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 to be living there to be working there to be playing uh, in my um, room for sports, the, the polysportive uh, room. Uh, they have uh, lectures, exhibitions, um, uh, playing football, playing baseball, playing everything, and for many uses. I would like, I like to, to make uh, an architecture capable to respond to many, many functions. It's not uh, untouchable. No, no, no. Thank you, Thank you so much. One more question. Uh, as we have all become more aware of the role our buildings play in global warming, have you found it necessary to change your work or your approach in reaction to the issues related to global warming, climate change? and environmental issues. Yeah. yeah, maybe your question, how do you call the other one? The suspension of time, no. This globe, uh, just now, how do you call the other one? Yeah, sustainability. Uh, I don't know why you didn't pronounce uh, with your last words, sustainability. Hmm? Uh, globality. Uh, the climate, the, the, the weather is changing. I think you must use common sense. Common sense is not to respond with uh, strange things. No, no, common sense. Uh, in when, one more time, when I was uh, um, a child living in Cadi, that is uh, uh, on the sea and is very humid, humid, the houses had holes. Every room had a hole in the corner, on the top. And I never, I never thought, only when I was an architect, I discovered that the holes were to create in, in this area with this special uh, weather, a uh, cross ventilation on the top. Sustainability, this type of things, or to make uh, in, in front, when I said my house of the infinite is Built because the house before was ruined because the frame was concrete with uh, iron in the interior, but the concrete was so bad quality that the the, the sea, the marine uh, atmosphere corroded the iron and what would destroy. Evidently, uh, I must protect when I was making the the frame, the structure supporting my house of the infinite, I was taking care of protect very well the, so everything must be thought. Uh, but uh, this type of discourse, I don't like, not, not your question, not the question that you proposed to me, but when people are I, I obsessed like uh, uh, this uh, uh, sustainability, okay, you, it's like, like your clothes. Your clothes are sustainable if they are very well made. If are made 
uh, in a bad way immediately, uh, two times in the, ¿cómo se dice la valora? In, in the washing machine, immediately is broken. No, it's to make things with uh, common sense, with uh, power, with knowledge. Uh, uh, Vitruvio said, utilitas firmitas venustas. Utilitas to accomplish the function, of course. To accomplish the function that been, we said, no, so personal, so, so eh? no, 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 more fluent, capable to change your function. When Vitruvius said uh, firmitas, he said firmitas is construction. When uh, in your university, in your school, I'm sure some students, stupid students, are worried to, to attend very well the classes uh, of design by known professors and not the classes for construction. It's so important a class where you describe and you resolve the, constru the good construction. It is sustainability. It's when you are using not only the reason for your ideas, but to materialize your ideas, to use, to build, to build very well, to know how to build. You must know how only having ideas and, and they build. No, no, you must know from the beginning until the last moment, control the building to resist the time. In the same way that I defend, when I defend universality and I defend to be this capacity to resist to the time, suspended time, I, I wrote, eh? is only to resist the time in the material way, to build very well. Sustainability, uh, universality, globality, okay, okay, but no in a stupid way, not only words. Okay, sorry, sorry, because I, I speak too much. No, 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 we love to hear you. Uh, uh, give me just one minute. I want to bring into the conversation Simon that he was uh, asking that questions about uh, the missing word sustainability. So maybe you can with him expand on what Simon exactly wanted to say. Please, Simon, jump in. Okay. Hi, thank Simon. You. And hello. Oh. And thank you for the, uh, the lecture and the beautiful work. Uh, I, I was specifically wondering uh, where um, is it still viable to make uh, the beautiful glass box, knowing what we do now about the amount of energy that it takes to, to heat and cool these buildings, for example. Um, going to the idea of common sense and building with common sense that, you know, as we learn more, our common sense changes. So. Is that something which is no longer viable in your work? Te traduzco. Sí. Sí, lo que pregunta es si es si es viable con el calentamiento global de la Tierra seguir haciendo cajas de cristal. Sí. Okay, no, it's a good question because I didn't explain much more about my projects because I don't like to be long, long, long. For example, in Zabora, this ha this box of glass with this double double skin, an interior and an exterior, in a corridor, in, in an image, I was crossing this corridor, the interior. Uh, you know, I don't know what type of uh, teaching is your teaching, but you know this French expression, mur trombe. Le mur trombe is this double, this empty uh, wall, uh, control the interior. When I decide to make the glass box in the interior of the stone box open to the sky in front of the cathedral, I was trying to make not only the most advanced uh, and delicate glass box, uh, for example, um, this image with Kevin Roach and, and Polsek, Polsek was uh, asking me, oh Alberto, how uh, did you build uh, this building in glass without metallic pieces 
of connection hmm, is because I consult experts in glass hmm, uh, from Saint Gobain in Spain, and we study a lot how to build and how this mirror tromb was effective. Hmm? It's very effective. On the floor, in the interior, has some holes, and the air is entering cold or or hot, depending of the of the time, and it's working perfectly. It's working very very well, but um, it's is sustainability in the same way that I order, eh, como se dice la, la esto de donde se entierra, geotermia, 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 geotermia is the system that you must to penetrate almost until the the center of the earth to create this system and is very very effective also. I use the two the two ways in this building. Uh, I think it is it is good to use technologies and advances in technology, but I insist with 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 your head, not to to be uh, to use the last technology. No, no, no. If the technology is uh, confirmed and is effective, you can use and you can make visible and to produce this effect of transparency and beauty, like this glass or box that you, you quoted, you mentioned. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one more question is made of several parts, so I will go into the one that we didn't talk so far, and is referring to digital fabrication in your work. There is any reference to that as a tool or as a technique or a series of approaches? to include digital fabrication in your work? En los planos. Supongo que se refiere a las maquetas 3D. Sí, no. On the one hand, uh, sometimes I, I enjoy, uh, como se dice, haciendo burla o... Um, joking. Joking, because uh, uh, just now they are, um, I, make a, I made a donation of all of my drawings to my school. And they are sc scanning with the scan the scanner uh, over my first um, drawings in digital uh, sheets of paper, and every design was made by myself with uh, rotting and graphos and antiques. Eh? And um, just now, everything is made by. Uh, AutoCAD and this one. On the one hand, mm, mm, drawings are made by mm, new system, new system for me that I am an old man, but for you, for young people is the most natural. On the other hand, I also use renders and drawings made with, uh, with uh, using uh, digital ways, renders. I love renders, but um, in comparison with models, a model, in a model, you are simultaneously the three dimensions and you can change and it's uh, very, very effective and satisfactory. Um, a model made by hand is not only like a piece of art, but it's also to analyze in this way and you go with your model under the sand and this type of things. But I must recognize that after making the model by your, by your hands or making renders, uh, inventing or interpreting things or making everything, finally, uh, the computer permits a lot of things. I remember when I received a beautiful uh, a beautiful picture on my house in New York. Uh, the, the, the trees had the, the leaves in red and brown and green. And the atmosphere of this picture was so beautiful. But the picture was taken in such a way that was a bit 
incliner. And I said, ah, what a pity, why? And immediately my collaborator said, no, Alberto, it's a question of optic and because the computer, ha the computer <coughs> has uh, the possibility, plop, plop, in one moment they put the house completely well. And I said, but you are, it's not true. And they said, yes, but it's a question of the optic of the camera and the optic of the uh, mechanisms of, uh, no, I must recognize that techniques of, of uh, work, of work are very, very good, very good. Uh, they help a lot. Mm -hmm. And also, of course, uh, you didn't ask it, but also to have a good photographer. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I say, a bad architect, bad architect with a good photographer is an hypocrite, hypocrite. But a good architect with a bad photographer is stupid. Mm -hmm. It is because I am so fortunate that I have a very good photographer capable to translate my words, my buildings in pictures capable to transmit very well the, the air, the aroma, and so on. Thank you. More questions? I am, I am ready and I am here very comfortable. I don't know if for you is too long or what, but I am here like at home. Yes, that's what we want. We want you to feel comfortable and very much welcome. Um, I have a question here from a student. And, and, and please, Pablo, let me know how much time we have because I don't want to really abuse uh, Alberto with all those questions. I think, I think Alberto is happy and uh, we're all happy so we can continue. And, uh, you know, there's no let problem. Let us know when you are tired. Thank you, Pablo. But maybe a couple of, two more questions, I would say. Okay. So we have a student here that is asking, what is your advice for students, for young students, and particularly they will be, you know, the next generation of architects uh, that we are preparing in our school. And so what are the experiences that you see that are important for the students to have at this uh -huh. time? I wrote a, a, a book, not so, no, very recent, and I want to be an architect, and it's also in English. And I recommend to the students this type of advices. Uh, at the beginning, I say, uh, when you are going up in a, in a uh, steps so or a staircase, you can jump ta 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 two two three three and pa 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 like that like I am the first that I use this one in my in my house. But when you are descending, you are descending one by one by one by one, because to jump descending, go down going down, is dangerous. And architecture is slow. It's not it's not uh, like a pizza. No, it's, uh, you need time, time, time to work, to work, to work. What is my, my main uh, virtue? I am very patient and I work in Spain, we say, como una mula, eh? <laughs> uh, a lot, a lot, a lot. You must work, I, but I insist by the third time that no become neurotic. No, uh, you must sleep well at night. You must uh, uh, to use the time to go to the cinema and to the theater. To read a lot, to read that good, good writers, no um, fashion, fashion writers, the uh, uh, novels that uh, I, I don't like to attack anyone and it is because I don't pronounce names of writers, very successful and not interesting. You must write classics. I said that I was reading Stefan Zweig, but I have also on my table Don Quixote de la Mancha by Cervantes that is very long, but very enjoyable. And I continue reading and reading a, a bit every day. Uh, I continue to read, to read a lot. Of course, to read and to, esta to study, to study, to study. Yeah. It, it was uh, another 
good um, writer and philosopher, George, George Steiner, in a book that I recommend you, Errata, uh, he described and he, he, said, he said, when I was a, a child, my father advised me, if you don't understand a piece of, of text, you must repeat the reading loud voice. And if you don't under do you don't understand completely, copy, write, write. And it's a good advice eh? to put attention. If I am defending to be precise, you must put attention at the at the work. You mustn't you must try not to be influ influenced by fashion. Eh? This architect uh, is very fashionable. I would like clack, 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 clack. No, architecture has, uh, a contemporary architecture is not stupid. Some people, they say, oh, Mr. Campo Baeza, maybe is uh, a bit antique, but he's not moving his building. No, I, if I need to move, I move. Uh, my favorite building is a spheric, the Pantheon in Rome. It's not a square, it's not cubic, it's round. And uh, Alvaro Alto made, he made uh, curves in a very good way and I adore and this type of things. Yeah? Okay. Advices, to work, to work, to work. Be happy, uh, be healthy. Uh, a, bit of, a bit of wine or liquor, but only a bit, yeah? not too much. I use, uh, my friends, they attack me, but I use a Spanish liquor named Pacharan. It's uh, some berries in uh, anisette and a bit, a bit, a bit, only a bit. Eh? You must enjoy the life. To, to be an artist, I insist, is not to be suffering. It's to enjoy and to enjoy, but to enjoy trying to be serious, to be profound, not boring, not boring but profound, mm -hmm. this type of question. A very patient, very, very patient. It is necessary to be very patient. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, Alberto. Uh, maybe one more question, if you would like to uh, follow up with uh, these questions. I'm not sure if it's a student uh, asking to summarize, because we, we touch already this during the conversation and in your presentation, but maybe you can give us a summary of your principles, the principles in your design philosophy. I think more than principles by Campo Baeza, I would like to repeat the principles by, by Vitruvius, hmm? an Italian. Uh, these uh, firmitas, venustas, and utilitas. Try to serve, to serve people. I insist that you are not making architecture to be a genius with your caprice. Hmm? Maybe a painter is not, is not a problem if he made the stupidities, but an architect making the stupidities to accomplish function to serve our society. Uh, first, the second, firmitas, to know how to build and so on. Uh, if, when I, I speak about light, ah, how the light, in this building, in my last building, uh, we are studying the size of the skylights, the holes, at the beginning were two by two, and just now are one 50 by 150, and we are turning and turning and turning. Uh, how to build, build firmitas, firmitas, firmitas. Um, Venustas, okay. Venustas is like, uh, I don't know, Maria, if you cook or you doesn't cook, but this capacity of the necessary time for the rice. The rice in five minutes is impossible. It needs 20 minutes and after to repose a bit. And when you put the salt, the salt, you need a bit of salt, but only very precise to, to get the beauty. 
to get the beauty, cooking to be to get the beauty with architecture. Utilitas, my advices, not ma, by me, by Vitruvius, Utilitas, Firmitas, Venustas, and, and to the patient and so on, I, I spoke. You, but you pronounce in one moment one word that I didn't pronounce, but I wrote many times, essential. You must try never to use the word minimal is stupid. Sometimes I receive that the label is minimal. No, no, no. Essential, essential. Precise is very precise word, but maybe essential is more beautiful word. You must, we must try to make an architecture capable to resist the time, essential and beautiful. To get the beauty, what can we ask more? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Alberto. It was an amazing conversation. Bravo. Thank and you. I would like to, before we conclude this incredible uh, lecture today, I would like uh, to, um, to say a couple of words about our future possible collaboration with Alberto. I invited him to teach a very special atelier studio in our school. Uh, we will attract uh, the best students, probably at the thesis level or at the Master of Architecture level. We are still discussing how to actually implement this idea. Will be a Dean's a special atelier studio supported by the Dean in person in collaboration with Alberto as a distinguished guest, uh, faculty professor, we will figure it out exactly the title that will represent you at the best. And I'm so excited to announce you that COVID, if COVID will permit this, will happen in the spring or the following fall, but very soon. And thank you for accepting our invitation. I cannot Look. I am at, at your disposal completely, yeah? with COVID and without COVID. Yeah. Thank you very, very, very much. We are very fortunate of this collaboration and you accepting this invitation. I'm re really, really honored to have you on board. And so thank you. Thank you for the inspiring moment that we have today. And let me conclude in, with a super special thank you uh, of course, to you, your team that assisted us in the preparation of this lecture, and also to our lecture series and events committee, uh, our staff that put together the effort to make this possible. And, and thank you everyone for supporting the School of Architecture and Design at NY NYIT. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to our students and faculty for being here today. Thank we do this for you. Thank you, Alberto, for coming. Thank, thank you, you, thank you, to you, you, all of you. Thank you very much, Alberto. And that that is curious because with this system, new system, uh, new, new for me, but not for you, uh, you are closer than me than in a, a traditional uh, lecture, but I can see your faces and your expression and it's very, very familiar. It's like a uh, personal class. I thank you, thank you, thank you. We are in this new mode and actually we spend a lot of effort in trying to reach out to people more than before. Uh -huh. And it's just an example of how we try to use the time that we are living in today and the constraints and you know what we are facing today is something different than any other moment but doesn't mean that we cannot be in solidarity and unify and together even more than before. So that's the message I want to send to everybody. Those moments are to be together again. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Maria. All of you.